I'm working with a document called characterpanel.ai, which is available inside the Chapter 6 folder. What we want to talk about now is how we can work with the character panel to ultimately control the appearance of our type. So in order for us to work with the character panel, you have a couple different options. If you have the type tool selected already, you'll notice in the control panel there's a character link, and if you click it, it's going to open up the character panel. The other option, of course, is to come up to the window menu, and under the window menu, if you go all the way down towards the bottom, you'll be able to choose type, and from there you can choose character. You'll notice that there's a keyboard shortcut, which is Command T here on the Mac. It's Control T on Windows. So the character panel has several different options for formatting your text. Obviously, you can control the font, the font size, but you'll also notice you have the ability to change the kerning, which is the distance between characters. You can also control the tracking, which is the distance between characters within an overall body of text. And you can also control the letting. Now there are additional options. If you come up here towards the top, in the top right hand corner you can choose show options. So again, if you're not completely familiar with typography terminology, letting is essentially the distance between lines of text, kerning is the distance between characters, and tracking is the distance between characters within a body of text or a selected piece of text. You'll also notice that you have the ability to control the vertical scale, which means you can increase or decrease the scale of the type. It's not really recommended to do that. In some situations, you can get away with maybe adjusting the scale either vertically or horizontally to get something to fit properly. But if you're really interested in typography, most type designers will kind of shriek at the idea of you scaling their type or their font. So you can get away with it in some situations, but you just want to be aware that you should use it sparingly. You can also control the baseline shift and the rotation of the type. Now you'll also notice that you have some modifiers down here. For example, you could use all capital letters or you could use small caps. You can also work with superscript and subscript options and you can create underline text and strike through text. Now we also have an anti-aliasing option here, which clearly is important if you're creating graphics for on-screen delivery, and you also have a dictionary, which is important. Now what's nice about this is you can apply this globally to an overall text area, or you can apply a lot of these properties to individual pieces of text or characters. For example, this drop-down menu here, you can control what dictionary is used for different pieces of text. Let's say, for example, these first two words were in Spanish. Well, if you were to come up to the edit menu and from there you chose check spelling, if these two words were in Spanish, the English dictionary will probably find spelling problems with these two words. So instead, what you can do is come over and change the language for these two words to, like I said, Spanish. Of course, they're not Spanish words. I was just kind of doing that as an example. But you do have a lot of control over some of the fine details of your type inside of Illustrator. It's really one of the best applications available for working with type. Now there are some keyboard shortcuts that I'd like to share with you. First of all, if you place a blinking cursor within this text area, and if you don't have the type tool selected and you have the selection tool highlighted, you can always double click to activate the selection tool. Command A or Control A will select all of the text. With all of the text selected, if you want to change the size of your type, you can do that. Now we have two different font sizes here, which is why we're not getting a readout here in the character panel or in the control panel. So what we can do, like I said, is use a keyboard shortcut. And that keyboard shortcut is Command Shift. It would be Control Shift on Windows. Then you can use the less than or greater than keys on your keyboard. And you'll notice that it's changing both pieces of text in a uniform fashion. So the relationship between the size differences between the two different pieces of text stays the same as you increase or decrease the size of the text. You can also control the tracking using keyboard shortcuts. The keyboard shortcut would be Command Option Shift. That would be Control Alt Shift on Windows. Then you can use the right arrow key to increase it and the left arrow key to decrease it. Using those same keyboard shortcuts, Command-Option-Shift, Control-Alt-Shift on Windows, 
you can use the up arrow and down arrow keys to adjust the baseline shift. Finally, if you wanted to sample styling of text, you can do that. If I were to choose the type tool and just click up here, and to click up here, you may need to hold down the command key or the control key to temporarily highlight the selection tool to essentially remove focus from the text area down below. Then if you click and you type design, build, plan, or I guess it should be plan, build, but that's fine. If you wanted these three words to look exactly the same as these words, well, you can do that. Select it. With it selected, you can choose the eyedropper tool. And the eyedropper tool is located here in the tools panel. Then you would just simply click on the text over here that you wanted to essentially copy the appearance from. You'll notice as you hover over this text, a little T appears next to the eyedropper tool. If you click, you've essentially copied the overall look of that text. You're using the same font and size and the same color. Of course, we're using all capitals here, but in this case, the capital letters were simply typed out using the caps lock key and not the all caps option. If the all caps option was in fact selected here in the character panel, we would have been able to sample that. But after the fact, what we can do is select this and choose that option, and now it really looks the same. So again, I just wanted to give you a quick overview of some of the options that are available inside the character panel when working with type inside of Illustrator.